Hey guys, it's Carla. Today we'll be painting this little praying frog statue. And um, I've not done anything to my canvas. This is a an 8 by 10 canvas panel and acrylic paint. So I'm going to start with my three quarter, yeah, three quarter inch mop brush for the background. And then, and because this will, we've got this blurry between the dark and the light, it's um, very blended. So this will give, give me that effect. Okay, so I'm going to wet my mop brush and actually going to wet my canvas a little bit too. Um, get that in there. Water in there real good. All right. So I'm going to start with my black because if I start with the white, then my brush gets contaminated with that white and I'll never get that really, really dark color. So I'm going to go ahead and start up there. And I'm just using circular motions to get down into the um, the tooth of the canvas. I want this to be really dark up here. Okay, now I'm going to pick up some raw umber. Just one little dab of it. Because it appears to be kind of, it has kind of a brownish tint to it right there in the middle. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start getting my, um, getting rid of my brush strokes. And to do that, I'm just dabbing with this mop brush. And that will give me like, um, if you can see it at all, it'll give me a textured look instead of brush strokes. And and if you want the brush strokes, that's fine too. I just, for this, I want this kind of soft, um, textured look. And if you don't have a mop brush to put this on, um, you can use a flat brush or just anything really. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up my white and go right under this. And kind of blend up into it. Now the farther up I get, the less pressure I'm using because I want this to be like a slow um, gradation.
Okay, now I'm going to pick up more white and do the same thing right below this. Just blend up into it. to wipe off some of that paint so that my brush is kind of dry and I'm just tapping again with a, an empty brush Again, I'm going right below that. <clears throat> Each time I pick up more white, I'm just putting it right across the bottom of what I've got on there and then tapping it up into it. And honestly, this background could be just a solid color if you want it to be. Okay, now I've got the whole canvas covered. I've got that slow gradation. So I've got the background the way I want it. And now I'm gonna dry it and um, trace my outline on. Okay, now I've dried it and I've used chalk. Um, I actually used white charcoal to trace this on. But you can use just regular school chalk if that's what you have. Uh, you don't want to use pencil because, like graphite pencil, you'll never get those lines covered. So, chalk or charcoal or pastels or something that's water soluble so that it will absorb into your paint. All right, now I'm going to use this um, my quarter inch filbert brush. If you wanted to use, um, if you wanted to use a larger one, you could a larger filbert, like um, like this, or and actually, I might use this one, um, or you could use a flat brush or an angle brush or um, whatever you're comfortable with to cover it. So I'm gonna wet that. Filbert, I think this is, it's a number 10. I think it's a half inch. Okay, so I need, I need a, a dark green color. I think I'll start with that. Or, um, yeah, I think I'll start with my dark. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue and some yellow. And I think I'm going to, with part of it, I'm not going to mix it into this whole pile. 
but over here I'm going to mix up some really dark green. And I'm going to start with that. So down here where it's almost black, I'm going to put in that darkest color. Okay, now I've got my, I think I've got all my darks in. I may have to come back and, and add some more that maybe I didn't realize was there. But I tried to look around for every little dark green area that I could find. Uh, but it's no big deal if you have to come back and, and put that in later. All right, so now I'm going to move in on to my regular green, my just um, kind of a medium green. I actually want to, let's see. Yeah, I want to add a little bit more yellow to that. Okay. Now I just want to look around for that color. Um, it's not this it's not this darkest color that you see on the reference photo. There's, you know, dark green right here. It's not that. It's kind of a I guess we're kind of using this as a um, transition color between the really dark green and the yellow. So most of this will be right up against that dark green. Okay, hopefully you can tell what I've done there. I've, I've put that color right up against most of my really dark green. And now I'm going to pick up some yellow, maybe add a little bit of that green to it. And I'm going to fill in the rest of the frog with this yellow. And then we'll come back on top of it with green. And up here in this dark area, it may take two coats. So if you'll start up here and then come down here and do this part, then maybe that will be dry when you go back to it. Okay, I wanted to show you before I put a second coat on the face um, that this is the same paint as this, but because this is against the lighter background, um, it showed up brighter. So when you get this, don't worry about it. That's, that's normal. I'm just going to have to go over it with another coat. And actually, what I might do is add just a touch of white to my yellow and that will give me better coverage. Now before I go on to my other green, I'm going to go ahead and paint the fingertips on. Um, and I'm going to use a little round brush for that. As far as the yellow goes, just keep playing with it till you get the shade that you want and you get the coverage that you want. Um, yellow is just, it's one of those colors that's just, it doesn't cover well over darker colors. So, you know, sometimes it takes two or three coats. All right, so now the fingernails, or fingers, or whatever, fingertips. So I'm going to use some of my 
tad red. Add a little bit of yellow to that. I, I kind of, they're not, they're not red. They're almost like a reddish orange. Okay, so that gives me my darkest shade in the fingertips. And now I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of this yellowish white. Yeah, I think that, so, um, so cad red, yellow, and white for this lighter shade on the fingertips. Now around the edges, it's still gonna be, we're gonna leave it dark. This is just kind of a highlight color for that reddish shade. Remember, acrylic paint is all about layering. Okay, so up here, this highlight is gonna separate my two fingertips. So I'm gonna put it all the way to the edge of this one on that top side. And then on this one, I'm gonna leave some of this dark down here to separate them. Okay, now we're gonna go even lighter. So without rinsing my brush, I'm gonna come over here to this yellow and white mixture. And that will give me a lighter shade. And each time we go lighter, we don't go out as far. We don't cover the whole fingertip. Just start in the lightest area of the fingertip and then move outward until until it starts getting dark out there. So we went from this, to this, to this, and now this lighter shade. I'm really just tapping this on. If you start lifting paint off though, um, 
then just let it dry before you do this. I want to keep that separation there between these two fingertips. So I'm going to leave that area bright. Now that might be all I do to the fingertips until we put our like white, white um, light on there. Where it's glaring um, so I'll come back to that after a while I want to go ahead and put the the little slits in for the eyes and maybe darken up the mouth a little bit so with my little round brush I'm gonna wet it and pick up black This comes all the way to the edge. I'm barely touching. thicken that up a little bit because I think it it's wider okay where else do I see black like I said the mouth maybe right in the center of the mouth needs to be brighter. I mean, darker. So I'm just lightly, I don't want to go over this whole, the whole width of the mouth with the black. That'll be too harsh. So I'm just using a light touch and going right in the center of it to create some depth. Now before I move on, I see that I've got some chalk that's still showing. So I'm gonna go go around with my little round brush and whatever colors those are supposed to be, I'm gonna go ahead and cover them because I don't want any chalk showing. Um, it does wipe up once the paint is dry, you can wipe off the chalk with, the, uh, with a, a damp paper towel, but I'd rather just go ahead and cover it. Okay, got all my chalk lines covered. And now I'm gonna use my Filbert hog bristle. And you probably knew I couldn't get through a painting without using a hog bristle brush. Okay, I had to add some more yellow to my palette. So some kind of dark, darkish green. Well, that blue is really strong. So once you get a lot of it in there, it takes a lot of yellow to make green even a dark green. Okay, so I'm gonna offload my brush so that I don't have a pile of paint on there. And wherever I see that dark green, I'm just gonna use the, the um, flat part of my brush and tap it 
on. So I just want to get, get that texture that I see in the photo. I also see right here above the eyelid, um, I'm using the skinny part of my brush, and I'm going to tap in this little green strip that I see. It There's a yellow strip there, so I've got to skip a little space and tap in this green. Now these areas where you see the really bright white, I'm going to go ahead and paint that whatever color I feel like is underneath it, but when I come back with the white, white is a very opaque color, so it's going to, um, I'm not going to have trouble covering that. I just want to tap in all of these green shapes. Okay, I think I've got all my green in that I want in. And I see a few places where I want to brighten up the yellow a little bit. And I'm just gonna use, I mean, you could use any brush, I guess. This is just the one I have, but I'm just going to kind of brighten up a few little spots. Um, also, when you're putting that green in, make sure you pay attention to shapes. Like, the green kind of comes down like this. And that shapes that shapes his lips. So um, you want to make sure you get those those shapes in. You know, it's not necessary to get all the little, you know, everything exactly the same. But the things that matter, pay attention to those. And those do matter because that shapes this right here. So when you're doing the green, make sure you get that in there right. All right, so I brightened up this yellow across here and down under the mouth. And um, I think that's good. Now I need some shadow right here. Uh, actually, several different places, but I see a lot right there that I need. And it looks kind of brownish. So with my hog bristle brush, I'm going to pick up some of that raw umber and actually maybe I'll put it in with that yellow. That might be a good, just a tad bit of yellow with raw umber. And I don't want much paint on my brush. And I'm just going to, that's still too much paint. So I'm just going to tap this in for that shadow shape that I see.
it helps to add this brown into the frog somewhere because there's brown in the background. That's what kind of brings it all together. I may be embellishing a little bit in order to get more brown in there because I do want it to be kind of unified with the background. Okay, before I forget, the center of this nostril is actually yellow. So I'm just gonna tap that in. Okay, so now it's time to put in all of the um, white highlights that are going to make it look like ceramic, I guess. That's what it is. Um, now first, I'm going to use, you can use a flat brush or a filbert brush or uh, whatever you have handy. So I've got this flat brush and I'm going to pick up A little white, just a touch of blue. I just want it barely tinted with blue. And then I'm gonna pick up some water and make almost like a glaze. So this little glare that's coming down the face here is gonna be that watered down pale blue. That way our, um, our, our frog still shows through but it just kind of gives the hint of a little of light shining off the, the uh, ceramic. Okay, so it comes over here. Kind of goes across that way. Comes up to the nostril there. And all the way up to this crease right here, where the the eye starts going up. So it goes all the way up to there. Down and around. And this doesn't have to be exact, but if you try to follow it, then at least you know you're getting close. Okay, so all of that is just a glare. And then I see a, a glare up here on the eye. So 
over here on this side. One coming down to kind of shape this little crevice. And we'll come back with bright white to to highlight some of this, but you want to get this glaze in there for a more realistic look. Okay, now with white, not watered down, I'm going to brighten up some of those areas. Like, I don't want to make all of this bright, but there's a highlighted spot right here on it. Anywhere that I see that it's brighter than than this uh, glaze that we put on. Okay, now I've I've gone around and put all of my bright white in. Um, I did a lot of it with the little um, the quarter inch filbert brush, 
but then for some of these thin lines, I switched to my little round pointed brush. So um, I've looked at it. I think I think that's it. So I think I'm happy with that. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you try it. Uh, it's a cute little praying frog. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And check out my other videos. I've got quite a few. And I'm adding more um, almost daily right now just to get plenty of content out there for you. So um, like, subscribe, comment. And until next time, bye guys.